Welcome to 2023 Predictions Series. And today we have with us once again, John Murtick, Executive Director of Open Mainframe Project. John, it's great to have you back on the show. It is great to be on the show and Happy New Year. Thanks for joining me. We all know about the Open Mainframe Project, but this is a good reminder to tell folks, what is this project all about? This project is really about the the ecosystem of open source on the mainframe, whether that be Linux, ZOS, any any operating system. Um, and, and specifically, I think, focusing on how the mainframe can interact with the rest of enterprise IT and focusing on helping build open source projects, communities, solutions, and collaborations that are really helping tackle that problem because that's you know one of the biggest needs for enterprise IT today. Now it's time for you to grab your crystal ball and tell us what predictions you have for our audience. I think the first one is really going to be related to uh, you know the growth of open source uh, within this industry. Uh, we saw Zoe just year over year um, almost doubled its growth in some of the earlier predictions um, that are done around in the industry. And I thought what was really telling to me was I believe it was you know somewhere around 70 percent of mainframe customers in one way or another were actually looking at Zoe which means there's an eye peeking towards the future of this being, you know, a technology people are looking at. But more broadly, the people in mainframe are considering open source, which, uh, you know, has been a big challenge. Companies, you know, trust what they know. Uh, they've been sticking with these, you know, infrastructure for decades on, on decades, and they're very used to it. Um, they're used to where they get their software from. And the idea of bringing software with the source code that anybody can look at and, you know, the potential security ramifications of that um, feels very scary. But I think the investments that have been going into it are are starting to mitigate that. And so we're just going to see more and more companies that are going to be seeing a project like Zoe, but even more importantly, just open source in general, um, they're going to be using it more and more. Companies are going to be, because of projects like Zoe, they're going to be able to better figure out how to use these mainframes in the rest of their business. That has kind of been the biggest challenge inside some of these companies is, you know, the mainframe group is kind of off in its own little world. And the great work that they're doing is not connected right back to the rest of the business. So I see a big thing that's going to start to happen is the walls are going to begin to come down and you're going to start to see companies are like, oh, wow, we realize that we have amazing data and applications and tools that we can use over here. Um, let's leverage those in the rest of our line of business. And um, maybe, just maybe, that somebody's going to see an application they're building. It's like, you know, one of the tiers of it, the mainframe might be a really good spot for it. And maybe they'll actually, you know, push and deploy it over. So, so we're going to see that kind of within companies that are already with mainframes. They're going to see that become much more centralized and pulling that together. And, and I think the third is, and, and this is sort of related to one of the, um, you know, big uh, things that are going to be ahead for us in 2023 um, with our own hardware coming on board, is I'm, I'm hoping to start to see more and more just sort of general folks out there having the mainframe on their radar of a technology to just play with, but also just to, you know, become more and more interested in and maybe even base a career. Last year alone, we had for our mentorship program, we had well over 500 applicants um, to be a mentee in the mainframe space, which is fantastic. I mean, I don't think there's any other program in mainframe that's that's getting that level of attention. And with the new hardware coming on board, with work that's happening like in the COBOL programming course and also our open mainframe education project, I think we're going to start to see that becoming a little bit more mainstream where people are going to say, you know what, I'm going to pick up these skills um, because these are really good career opportunities for me. So I'm going to keep it at three. I'm a big person in in, in number and rules of three. So um, that, that's where I'm thinking for 2023. That was a good pun, not the three at the end there. Thanks for sharing these predictions. Can you talk a bit about what is going to be the focus of the project this year? Getting the mainframe online. We announced it last year. And our laser focus is we want this box online. We want to get it. So not only our project communities that we're hosting, but any open source project out there can come and use it to help support it. So that is our number one focus is exactly that. I would say the number two after that is 
starting to work with some of our um, you know, partner foundations such as Finos and the CD Foundation, and there's going to be a number of others, on just ideas of how we collaborate together because there's just a lot of different shared interests. Um, within Finos, that's focused on the financial industry. The bulk of mainframe usage is around finance, so there's a ton of overlap there. And I think for a lot of the, the companies that are invested on both sides, they're going to see this as a way to kind of the aforementioned walls that I was talking about this is a way they can take them down because they're going to be able to bring both sides of the business together. And with the CD Foundation, uh, a huge thing that we're seeing in mainframe is the rise of DevOps and how can we connect how the mainframe CI, CD and DevOps skill sets are back to the same one that are used um, within the rest of the enterprise. So I would say that's going to be a, a number two theme in there for us. But the biggest and the biggest thing that our community wants the biggest thing that every single person I have talked to around this project for the last eight years has kept asking of, when are you getting a mainframe? Well, we have one, we want to get it turned on. And that's that's our big thing. Now, if I ask you, uh, what are some of the big challenges that you see are going to be there, not just uh, for, for the project or uh, in, you know, mainframe uh, in the uh, ecosystem but industry in general and how the open mainframe project can help you know organizations companies stakeholders kind of navigate through some of these challenges we're heading into an a, 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 you know industry downturn we're heading into a recession we're probably in a recession depending upon who you talk to and you know that's affecting everyone and i think we're seeing areas of the tech sector and it, especially being hit quite hard um, with layoff announcements um, in unprecedented levels in number a number of these companies. Um, and I think additionally, that's going to have a trickle down effect into a number of the users of mainframes, but just also using of technologies as well. So generally, what we tend to see is in economic downturn opportunities, you see companies kind of hedging back, you start to see them, um, you know, really kind of taking stock of what they're all about. And oftentimes we see coming out of that is open source. We see companies saying, well, geez, we're holding on to this. Let's build a community around it. You know, let's use this opportunity to get this, you know, to get this code out here, you know, saving us some costs, um, but then also potentially bringing other costs as well. So I, I see the challenge of the economic hardships that are going to hit us all is it's inevitable. It's going to be there. Where I see the open mainframe project is, is an outlet for companies that are looking to see as open collaboration as a way to, you know, reduce costs, reduce R and D, um, but still being able to execute at that high level. But you know, also as an opportunity for for seeing some of the projects and technologies that are driven here, and looking back in their companies and saying, you know, maybe this is maybe this is a time we kind of look at implementing a Zoe. Maybe this is the time, you know, we look at um, you know a Cobol check. Um, for, you know, standardizing our COBOL unit testing. Maybe we start to look at a Phalong, um, you know, around CloudStack. So I think that becomes sort of a, a motivator for companies when they're kind of in a, an area where they're all sort of cutting corners. John, thank you so much for taking time out today. And of course, share this prediction, the challenges ahead, and of course, the opportunity that are there and how Open Mainframe Project can help the, the, the community. Thank you for sharing all those insights. And as usual, I'd love to have you back on the show. Thank you. I will definitely be back on that show. Thank you so much.